Hello everyone and welcome to my session stand out from the crowd uh, and land your next or your first power platform role. Now it's an honour for me to be presenting here at Scottish Summit 2021 and I'm grateful to you all for viewing my session. Before we start I'd like to show my appreciation to the sponsors of Scottish Summit 2021 that you can see here on screen. Uh, Script Runner, DQ Global, Proximo 3, Red Spire, Agilisys uh, and, and Hitachi Solutions. Without sponsors, these free to attend events can't happen, so a big thank you to them. A little about me. Uh, so I'm Craig McGough and currently I am working as a Dynamics 365 implementation analyst at Mercury XRM. We are a Microsoft Gold partner. Uh, we are an ISV specialising in delivering the best recruitment platform out there on the market uh, and that's something that we have built on the Power Platform. A little bit more about my story uh, and I guess the inspiration behind this session. I started working as a Microsoft Dynamics recruitment consultant and I was sourcing and placing Power Platform professionals primarily across the UK but also in some global roles as well. I then joined uh, a Microsoft Gold partner to work as the sole in-house internal recruiter. And this gives me a great insight into the thinking and thoughts of clients when recruiting for Power Platform professionals. And in this session, I want to share some tips and some tricks to help you stand out and also highlight some common mistakes that you can easily avoid making, which in my years in recruitment, I saw time and time again cause very good candidates to miss out on roles. Whilst working full time as a recruiter, I set myself a goal to become a Power Platform consultant. And after passing multiple exams, I realized my dream in January 2020. I hold several exams, as you can see on the slide there. And four of the five I actually passed whilst undertaking my full time role. So I would do these after hours or on weekends. Um, and in this session, I'm not going to suggest any cheat codes. Uh, but what I will do is use my experiences and explain the things that I wish I had learned on my journey before I started out, which alongside working hard has me convinced that anyone who wants it can become a power platform professional. As I mentioned, currently I'm working at Mercury XRM. Uh, we are a successful Microsoft Dynamics Gold partner and I'm currently working in a, in a pre-sales and delivery role which means that as well as scoping and having conversations with customers around how they want to enhance their business with the Power Platform, I also deliver and implement that work as well. So let's take a look at the Power Platform industry itself. So the Power Platform industry is notoriously niche and in recruitment parlance, we would refer to it as candidate shy. And what we mean by that is at any one time, there are more jobs available than there are candidates available. Now, this is good for us because that means that in terms of the supply and demand, it is very much in the candidate's favour. Uh, and despite the fact the Power Platform is a highly skilled role, there are a, a proportionately high amount of roles there in terms of the bar of entry for beginners or lend itself to be something that we can break into if we work hard enough. However, the industry is also multifaceted and by which I mean there are niches within a niche. This means that whilst there are lots of rules available and as we mentioned the bar for entry can be low, we really need to know what we want to be doing or at least be in a position to be open minded about what we want to be doing and seeing where your skills could be best utilised and where you would most enjoy working. The platform's ever evolving and this helps us achieve that open minded nature of how we want to work. And unlike in accountancy, for example, where progression might be slow and gradual, the power platform changes on an almost daily basis. Therefore, it's a market in which you need to keep your finger on the pulse regarding technological changes and enhancements. It may be candidate shy, but that doesn't mean you can't get left behind. Finally, as a product, it is very fun, very challenging. Now this lends itself to being a very desirable career choice and whilst hopefully some of you viewing the session are already working in the industry, I hope we do have some new faces ready to kickstart their own path to working in the power platform industry. Finding your home. Now 
This may seem like a strange title, but there are two very distinct paths when working in the Power Platform. There are partners and ISVs, which stands for independent software vendors, and there also are end users. Now, the Microsoft Power Platform operates with a very strong partner channel, and I won't delve too deep into that in this session. But essentially, these businesses alongside ISVs are third party, third party businesses which specialize in implementing, customizing, extending and supporting the Power Platform for their customers. The customers themselves are referred to as end users. Uh, and you yourself may work at an end user, and that might be where your interest in the Power Platform stems from. Now, working at a partner is often more fast paced, project focused. You may be working with many different clients at any one time and across many different Power Platform tenancies. Working at an end user, however, will often see you with having the perception of an internal guru. You'll often work within a sole Power Platform tenancy and will take an inch wide, mile deep approach. You'll know the one system inside out and back to front, and the role will likely be slower paced than working in a partner. And when deciding where you'd like your next move to take you, there's a few factors that we need to be mindful of. Now in the partner channel, there will be a primary focus on the Power Platform. This will be how that business makes their profit. Therefore, there is a clear need to continuously hire, train, develop and retain Power Platform professionals come what may. With end users, however, the power, the, the power Platform will be a conduit within their business, but it's unlikely to be the sole focus, potentially even within the IT department. Never mind the business at large. So whilst you will be an integral part of the business, you may find things like training budget, investment in yourself with the Power Platform or chances to work with cutting edge technology might be less prevalent. Now, I should obviously point out that these are generalizations. They are not representative of all partners or all end users for better or worse, but they should hopefully help you understand where you'd like your next move to be or indeed your first move to be. I mentioned the Power Platform was a continuously evolving platform. Now, for people looking for their next opportunity, this represents a fantastic opportunity to stand out as by being as up to date as possible with the advancements in the technology during your career so far. This could merely make you stand out as someone who is dedicated to the platform and developing themselves. Likewise, for those of you starting out, you have the chance to upskill on the latest tools within the platform and thus you can add value on day one in a business, perhaps by bringing skills current employees do not have. Therefore, you can immediately plug a skills gap. Let's look at the, some of the ways in which we can ensure we are staying up to date when getting started or continuing our, our Power Platform journey. Firstly, it's important that we get hands on with areas of the platform we're learning. Whether we're starting from scratch or we're working with a new area of the platform as an experienced Power Platform professional, it's important to dive in. Now, Microsoft allow us to easily access trial environments. And when I was starting my journey, I remember Lee Carrick, who was my practice director at the time. Uh, he gave me some advice that I still believe in massively today. He said, get a trial, press all the buttons and see what breaks. And by fixing it, you will learn so much about how the product works. Now that may seem daunting, but I truly believe there is no amount of theory in the world that can compensate for actually using the products, playing around with them, having some fun. A word of warning, however, to anyone with access to Power Platform environments in their workplace, please don't press all the buttons and see what breaks on your live production environment. And if you do, please don't tell anyone, tell anyone I told you to. Get a trial, play around with it in there. Secondly, we have a whole host of learning materials devised by Microsoft themselves. Microsoft have an exceptional array of learning materials and a very clear path of exams to solidify and validate that knowledge that we can get. The Microsoft Learn site is invaluable. It's a gold mine of videos, knowledge checkers and practical exercises for any level. Whether you're a beginner or you're an expert, there is something in there for you to improve your knowledge. Now, for those of you just starting your journey, Exams are a very obvious way to show your commitment to learning the platform and to give you a level of knowledge. They offer you a clear syllabus to help guide your learning and will also give you a clear sense of achievement with the product that hopefully will instill confidence in you. 
yes, you can do this. And that's certainly what I felt when I was learning. I felt like it gave me a plan. I wasn't losing time or wasting time looking at things that either weren't relevant to me or I couldn't understand because they were too in-depth for me. I had a clear plan. And with each new step, it gave me a lot of confidence. And I thought I could I could do this. I can really achieve my goal. And whilst exams aren't everything, and certainly whilst exams alone won't make you great, for those starting out, they're certainly a very sensible starting point. And as a well-worn out hashtag states that you will see a lot on LinkedIn and social media when you start following Power Platform accounts. And this goes for all of us. We should always be learning. On the slide there, you can see the array of fundamentals exams that we have available. And this allows us to look both not only at the wider Power Platform itself, but also we can start going more in depth on specific areas of the product as well. So for example, there we can see as well as the Power Platform fundamentals, we've also got specific Dynamics 365 areas that we can target. Next, we should get following. Now, whilst it, you know, from my experience, I have never known of a more active, open, welcoming and passionate community. Uh, the community has a whole host of positive reasons to get involved, but certainly one of the most important for anyone looking to improve their knowledge is a sheer amount of amazing advice, tips, tricks, blogs, articles shared by fellow community members. There are a whole host of podcasts and YouTube channels and events such as this that you can learn from the best and the brightest, but also those charting their journey at entry level and beyond in an open and a non-judgmental setting. Now look at the list of speakers at this event. Most, if not all, will have social media accounts. Follow them. You'll find most of the speakers here this, here this weekend will regularly share really insightful information. It will be right to your timeline. You won't have to go looking for it. Go and follow them and see what information that you can glean from them. Further, you can also find user groups. Now these are done for free. And they're given in the spare time of members of the community aimed purely at supporting those beginning their journey into the power platform. Uh, one such example, Julian Sharp, who is a, a legend in the community from a training and certification perspective, runs a lot of these. And if you can get access to one of Julian's uh, user groups, you will definitely not regret it. Now, Julian's on the screen there and alongside Julian, uh, here are some more people uh, and resources that really helped me and continue to help me uh, with my journey through the Power Platform from a standing start to where I am now. And I mean this genuinely when I say without these people and these events and these groups, my journey would have been significantly harder than it has been. I want to particularly shout out Julian and also Matt Collins Jones that you can see on the screen there. The amount of help I took from their resources in particular was just crazy. They've really, really helped kick me on, explain concepts to me, and I was able to take their resources and really grow myself at a speed that I don't think I would have been able to do without them. Please do use those around you willing to help and follow their channels, their podcasts and their blogs. And I want to reiterate the community again. We are so lucky to work or to be interested in working with a product that has such a vibrant and welcoming community. Use it to your advantage. Learn, make friends, uncover opportunities, feel part of something, and hopefully in time, give something back. And I'd be willing to bet that you won't regret dipping your toe into the water. Finding roles. Now, for many, this will be a minefield. Knowing where to look, when to look, and what to look for is difficult at the best of times. But within a niche industry like the Power Platform, it can be even harder to the uninitiated. Firstly, use recruitment agencies. Now, recruiters get a bad rep. Much like lawyers or estate agents, you'll always hear the stories of the bad ones. But I speak from experience when I say that there are many, many more great ones than bad ones. More often than not, recruiters will be free for candidates. They will take their, free, their fee from employers once filling their vacancies. Therefore, you've, you're in a win-win situation. If you get a job via a recruiter, great. If you don't, then it's cost you nothing. And still, you are likely to have received free market advice, 
interview advice, CV advice, and I guess more importantly, you'll have someone fight in your corner to help you get a new role. Next, use social media. Following on from the slide previously and the, the social media of those speaking at, the, at this event today, follow their employers, follow the sponsors of this event, follow as many power platform companies, blogs and groups as you can. Now, this should allow you to not only keep up to date with interesting happenings with the platform and give you some good visibility over interesting insights and webinars and resources within the power platform, but this will also direct you to vacancies as they go live. Be sure to sign up to mailing lists for vacancies as well. Now, this not only gives you the benefit of understanding what's going on, but they will come to you. You'll have it, you'll have vacancies dropping into your inbox. Next. Plot your own path. Perhaps the scattergun approach isn't for you. Perhaps you already know where you want to go. In this case, plot your own path and follow it strategically. Identify where you'd like to work. Reach out to those companies with an amazing CV and an amazing cover letter explaining what you would bring to the table, why you want to work there and see what happens. The market's niche, and I've said this a lot already, but, but a proactive approach shows great confidence, desire and ingenuity. And albeit the first power platform role I had was within my current employer at the time, that's exactly how I made my move. I ignored my nerves, I put my head above the parapet, and I asked to be given an opportunity, and the answer was yes. It may sound far-fetched, but it is definitely doable. Finally, use your connections. Now, assuming you followed my advice up to this point, you've got active in the community, or at least you've followed and interactive, interacted with peers within the power platform industry, then I'm sure that you'll have people willing to help you with guidance and advice on how to land your next or your first role. It's a well-worn cliche, but sometimes it really is who you know that can help push you in the right direction. Remember, sometimes when you want something, you just have to ask. Now, what roles are there? For some, moving roles is daunting, not just because of the common nerves that everyone has around moving jobs, but also because the roles may be unfamiliar if you've never been in the technical industry before. There are multiple career paths and roles you can follow in the platform, which is both a blessing and a curse, in all honesty. If you don't have a clear goal that you want to pursue, it can be a little overwhelming. Now, often people will travel from support through to either solution architecture or management as their end goal. However, this is not always the case. Sometimes moving horizontally, diagonally, or even backwards may be the right move for you, depending on the specifics of the role that you go, you go to. Maybe it's the company that will benefit you more. Maybe you'll be working with a different arm of the technology. There's a whole host of reasons why you might move backwards or diagonally, as opposed to simply following that linear path upwards. Now, beyond that, we need to understand the terms technical and functional. Now, particularly when it comes to consultancy, this will be more prevalent and ultimately a technical consultant will be more involved hands on with the technology than they are discussing commercial benefits or aims for the client. On the flip side of that, functional consultants will likely spend more time discussing the possibilities of the platform with customers, uncovering their aims, their wants around the technology and what they want to solve. They will then go and design this and either pass it to technical consultants to build or build it themselves. Beyond this, there, there are also routes within business analysis, which involves looking at the ways technology can help customers in a more in-depth manner. We also have the option to go into project management, ensuring that projects run smoothly and that they are delivered on time and within the agreed budget. Uh, for many, this is probably akin to herding cats, um, but it's obviously a very, a very important route that we can follow. And we also have technical sales routes where you're going out and you're selling the platform to customers um, and as well as being great in terms of sales and rapport building, you also need to understand the technology as well. Now, for many, the pinnacle uh, of the technical route will, will be either into solutions architecture, i.e. designing very high level complex systems or into a management route. But this is quite a one dimensional way of looking at it uh, and it's purely there for illustration. Your career and more importantly, your perfect career is yours alone to define 
And one of the major attractions to working within the, in the platform is that there will be an abundance of opportunities open to you. So once we've highlighted the roles that we'd like to be doing, we need to start ensuring that we're standing out from the crowd in order to land them. And there are a number of truly fundamental things that we need to ensure that we get right, as well as some really common pitfalls that I've seen time and time again over the course of my career. Firstly, you need to know where you want to go. I've said this before, or at least loosely know where you want to go. And once you have that goal, you need to start putting in a plan to control your own future. Look for the companies hiring for these roles. Break the job descriptions down and break them down honestly. Look into the things that you can do and that you can't do. Be true to yourself and with the ones that you can't do, work on them. Put a plan together to learn them and make sure that you're using all of the resources available to help you get there. Set yourself clear time skills and reward yourself when you complete them. Remember, you truly can control your own future, but you need a clear goal, a clear plan and a clear time scale to aim for and to use everything around you to achieve it. Next, we need to ensure that we've done the basics right. I can't begin to explain how many times I've seen good candidates not get beyond the CV SIF because their CV fail, failed to sell them whatsoever, or they failed to get to a second stage interview because they hadn't done basic research or preparation. A CV and a covering letter are advertising materials. They aren't terms and conditions or a tick box exercise to contain the bare minimum of information. And when we talk about the basics, we mean this, your CV needs to be up to scratch. You need to include a covering letter that explains your drive and your motivation, and you need to ensure that you've done your research and preparation on the role in the business. At interview, the basics are, are ensuring that where possible, you've researched the interviewers as well. You follow the drone as being defined, and you bring any documents that you need to bring along with you. Sam Cook, who is the head of customer success at Nigel Frank International, who are a global power platform recruiters, talks about some of the main things that his clients look for when reviewing CVs. And he, he, highlights, his, he, he highlights this. He wants to see someone tailoring their CV, explaining why they work with the power platform and not just what they've done. And this is something I echo hugely. The what is far less important than the why. Secondly, once we've reached an interview, we need to know our lines. Nobody knows you as well as you know yourself. And whilst your CV is very important, it's only one tool in your armory to help you get across about what you want to say about yourself. The biggest factor for me in knowing your lines is what I would call knowing your why. Your why is the fundamental reason why you want to work in the Power Platform and why you want to work at the job you're interviewing for. As I said previously, without the why, there really isn't much point in explaining the what. And this certainly rings true for a lot of the hiring managers I've worked alongside to recruit candidates in my career. And I can't even begin to quantify how many people I've interviewed who were not able to articulate why they'd applied for the role. It might be financial, it might be technological, it might be for flexibility or geography, but whatever it is, know your why. Practice explaining your why and believe in your why. This also goes further in terms of knowing your lines and that's knowing your CV inside out. You've written it, probably. So you need to make sure that you aren't surprised when items on your CV or your application form come up as questions. I would say go further. Practice the questions that you're likely to be asked. Why are you moving on? Why do you want to work here? Why should we take someone junior? Why should we take you? You can find common interview questions online, or as we mentioned earlier, ask someone in the channel for help who's been through many of these interviews in the past. You also need to ensure that you're doing your, your digging and your research on the company and the people that you'll be speaking to. If you can't prepare for an interview, how can the company trust that you'll be prepared to do your daily work in diligence and admin? Preparation for interview will never ever be wasted, whether you get the role or not. Some of the best ways of learning how to pass interviews is by failing them. Always prepare. Finally, we need to paint the picture. Interviews aren't box ticking exercises. 
they need to be a two-way discussion that allows both parties to sell the benefits of themselves as well as assessing the pros and cons of each other. You therefore need to ensure that you're painting a realistic but enticing picture about what you could bring to the table for the company that you're interviewing with. Especially if you don't have the knowledge, painting the picture of how hard you will work to learn, where you will go to find the information that you need is truly important when we're looking at passing interviews. If you don't have the certifications, paint the picture, explain your learning path that you've defined as we mentioned earlier in this slide. And as Chris Kendrick, who's the CEO of Mercury XRM where I work says, when he's hiring, he looks for a thirst for knowledge and a passion for learning. If you note, he doesn't say he looks for the best person with the most skills. The final thing I want to point out is, in my experience, the sole biggest reason good candidates fail to get roles when they're interviewing with technical positions, and it's something that I call the concept of we. Now, excuse me. The concept of we is something that, to strongly generalize, British candidates in particular are particularly no notorious for. And in an attempt to avoid appearing arrogant, we avoid talking up our own achievements and instead we talk with vigour about how well the team that we were part of performed. And granted, working as part of a team is hugely important and it's likely that you will be asked to show that you're a team player in some way. But it's unlikely that you're going to be sitting en masse with the rest of your colleagues moving to a new role as a team. Therefore, when hiring managers are reviewing CVs or interviewing candidates, they want to know your role, your part in the success, your strengths, your weaknesses, your achievements, where you have excelled, what you have done with the platform. It's very, very hard to offer someone an interview. If you don't know what they've done, you just know what other people have done. So don't worry about appearing arrogant. As Chris Kendrick's quote illustrates there, managers aren't always looking for the expert, but they still need to know what you have and what you haven't done. So let's look at interview questions themselves. An interview is an opportunity to advertise and you are the billboard. You need to use this to sell yourself. Within an interview, there are a few key components or question sets that we can expect and that we need to ensure that we've covered and that we've covered well. Firstly, and for me, most importantly, are the why questions. Why you want to work there, why they should hire you, why the power platform, why you're moving on. Uh, and these are likely to be questions uh, that we can prepare for both to ask and also to be asked. The more you can prepare for your likely why questions, the better you will perform, the more confidence you will have going into, into the interview and the more that you will stand out. Beyond that, we have the what questions. Now, these are likely to form two categories. What have you done? And what do you know? For those moving on or looking to move on from roles already within the Power Platform, your interviews are likely to be heavy on the first category of this in terms of what have you done. So be prepared to discuss in potentially fine and minute detail your roles, going back to the concept of we, your roles in what you have achieved, learned and taken away from the roles that you've had. Again, this is your interview. It's your time to shine. And whilst your team may have achieved great things, be prepared to discuss your role in that. In relation to the what do you know questions, there's likely to be questions that you, you don't know the answer to. This is hugely important when this happens. You need to not panic. The platform moves so quickly that it's impossible to know everything about everything, especially not when we put someone under the mental pressures of an interview. So be honest, explain you don't know the answer, but make sure you either go into detail about what you think it might be, or explain the route and the resources that, that you would use to go and find the answer. And remember, even the MVPs in our community still use Google. They still go to the wider community for advice and they still visit docs.microsoft. And in the course of my career, I have been in many, many interviews 
where the way candidates answered questions they didn't know the answer to was the primary reason they got the job. Knowing things is great. However, being calm under pressure, being able to reason and articulate your thoughts even when you're unsure, and being both humble enough to ask and also aware of where to get help, they're hugely attractive traits for prospective em employers because it's impossible to think that you, through the course of your time working for that business, you'll know everything you may ever encounter. What they need to see in you is that when something is uncomfortable, that you can handle it, you can handle it professionally, logically, and that you remain calm. Finally, we have the what else questions. Now, perhaps you have no technological experience whatsoever at this point, and, and perhaps you can't answer many or any questions right now on the Power Platform. But believe me when I say this might not stop you getting an opportunity in the channel. We used to have a saying when I worked at Perfect Image, who are a Microsoft Gold partner. We used to say we can teach technology, but we can't teach personality. Therefore, when preparing for interviews, think hard about what are the skills you can bring to the table. Perhaps you have strong organizational skills. Perhaps you're someone who regularly takes on responsibility. Perhaps you're an Excel wizard. Perhaps you're responsible for either training your staff internally or you're the sole point of contact for your clients. These are all traits which can add value to businesses, especially things that can add value whilst you're learning and getting to grips with the platform. As I mentioned a few times throughout this session, the industry is candidate shy. We have less people than we need. Potential, therefore, is a very, very valuable commodity, as well as knowledge of the platform. Make sure that you don't do yourself a disservice by ignoring things that businesses would really, really want to have in their organizations because you think, well, it's not Power Platform, therefore it doesn't matter. Make sure you've prepared. And the final area that I want to touch on is what I call the interview triangle. Now, when I was recruiting, this really was the holy grail. And no matter how many metrics or competencies or tick boxes a role had that we had defined for assessment, in reality, it always came back to, to three fundamental questions. Now, the first one was, does the candidate want the job? Have they shown us passion for the role? Have they shown us passion for the product? Have they done research on us? Did it look like they made an effort or are we simply something to pay the mortgage for a while? Or are we one of 10 other opportunities that the candidate's applying for? You need to get across that you want to work there. Secondly, can the candidate do the job? Now, this could be a number of things. Have they explained what they can bring to the table to add value now? Or have they explained how they can add value in the near future? Will they be an asset to us now or in the future? And have we seen what we can get out of them? We need to make sure that we're, we're really showing that we can be an asset for businesses. That's what we mean by can you do the job? It doesn't necessarily have to be today, but we need to make sure we can be an asset sooner rather than later for that company. Finally, we need to look at whether we can work together. And this is hugely important, especially to those of you who are looking for their first break into the channel. Now, we spend the vast majority of our time at work and the power platform industry is, is largely client facing for many people. Therefore, the people we work alongside and the people we choose to represent our brands to our customers, they're hugely important decisions that we need to take both as ourselves as candidates, but also for hiring managers. So be yourself, be genuine, show the real you and try to understand the reality of the business that you're speaking to. Try and go somewhere that you're valued, where you share the same morals and drivers of the business and where you are an asset to be nurtured and invested in, not somewhere you're simply a cog in a large machine alongside people you don't have much in common with, with a business that doesn't really share values that you do. The reason for this is that you will perform better, you will learn faster and you will grow more in an environment that you're comfortable with. And 
for those of you at the start of your journey, it may be very tempting to jump into the first jobs that, that, that gives you an opportunity. Um, or maybe it's, you know, for someone who is already working the platform, the first job that gives you an opportunity to work with a particular element of the platform that you really want to get your hands on. But I really would urge patients to make sure that the intangibles that become so important once we're actually in and settled into a role in a business, make sure they're there for the duration of that role. Morals and drivers and a shared ambition and interest in your future are hugely a valuable parts of this whole puzzle that we really should make sure that we aren't ignoring. And whenever I was interviewing, these three items would always be what we came back to, as I mentioned. And as well as when I was recruiting, this is now how I always try and prepare for interviews myself. Using all the elements that we've discussed during this session, I try and bring everything back to ensuring I do my best to cover these three bases to the best of my ability. And for me, here's the best part. In reality, you only ever need to tick two of these boxes at any one time to be a serious contender for a role. If you can clearly do the job and you clearly want the job, then perhaps it will be seen as less of an issue if you don't quite have the rapport of others. Likewise, and this is potentially the most important two to take away if you're just starting out on your journey. If you find somewhere where you would fit in very well on a personal level, where you share the values of the business and you, you articulate your why and how much you want the job, you'd be surprised how easy it is for the business to overlook the areas where you might not be able to do things and where you can't add value right now. This is the reason that knowing your why and knowing your what else questions become so important. And in my experience, you know, we only need two out of the three to be a real contender. And as Meatloaf said, two out of three ain't bad. So to wrap up, if you truly want to stand out from the crowd and you want to land either your next role or you want to land your first role, know your why. Ensure that you're hitting the interview triangle criteria. And I'm sure you'll be very well on the way to success. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for attending the session uh, and to listening to my presentation. Uh, for anyone wishing to watch it back, this will be uploaded on YouTube after 14 days. Good luck to all of you with your journey along this amazing platform. I sincerely hope that you found something uh, in the session that will be useful and that will help you along. Um, again, I strongly urge you to go uh, and review the other speakers, get as many sessions in as you can follow everyone on social media, follow as many of the groups as you can and get involved in more of these events. They're an invaluable resource and hopefully in time it will be you that will, will be presenting at these. I certainly didn't think when I started my journey that, you know, within the short space of time that I have, that I will be on the other side of the fence giving a session. So thank you once again to everyone who's attended. Thank you to uh, our sponsors again, to the volunteers that helped make this event possible and to the organisers of Scottish Summit 2021. Thank you very much for listening.